In this video, we are going to get a brief introduction into what a function is and spend a little bit of time talking about what function rules are and how to evaluate them. Very cool and extremely important stuff does not have to mean that it's difficult though. So let's dive into it. We're told that a function is a relationship that pairs an input value or number with exactly one output value. So let me go over exactly what that looks like by talking about function rules. Function rules are rules that describe functions. They show the numerical relationship between numbers that we would put in and numbers that we would get out. So an example that you'd see is y is equal to 6 times x, meaning our output is y, and when we input x values, values for x, we will multiply them by 6 to get out the y value. So for every x value we put in, we will get out only one y value, which makes this a function. And it is the rule that describes the function. Another more real world scenario would be having a job. The amount that you earn or the amount earned is equal to, let's say, $10 times the number of hours worked. As abbreviated algebra, that would be A for the amount earned is equal to 10 times H. Again, for every hour amount we put in, we will get out a different, but only exactly one amount, output value. That makes both of these functions. For instance, if I put in the number one for hours, I'd get 10 times one, and that equals out to 10. If I plug in one, I don't expect to get out anything else besides 10. And that makes this a function. Here, if I were to plug in negative 3 for x, negative 3 times 6 is negative 18 is my output. I will not get out any other number when I plug in negative 3 except negative 18, making that a function. And these are, again, rules that describe the function because a rule is what we follow, what we use to describe a situation, right? Or to give us out, in this case, numbers. Very cool. So here we are now going to do what's called evaluate function rules. So it says evaluate y equals negative 2x plus 1 for x equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, how do we do that? It's not so bad. And I'm going to actually spin around this way. I got myself turned around. So to evaluate, that literally just means plug in. So a lot of people like to organize themselves with tables. I'm going to show the work to the left and then we can put everything to the table to the right here. So our inputs are our x values. So that'll be x and our outputs are our y values. So think that this is input, what we're putting in, and this is output. All right, and let's see what values we get. So I'm gonna input zero first. So I'm gonna follow this rule, which means that y is equal to negative two times, we're inputting in zero. And then we're going to add one. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. It's as simple as that. So I input 0, and I got an output of 1. We're going to do the same thing now for 1. y equals negative 2 times 1. We're going to add 1 to that because that is what the rule tells us to do. We simplify now using the order of operations. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. So I input 1, and my output was negative 1. Sweet, let's do two more. Y is equal to, my input is positive two. I will add one, following the rule. All I'm doing is inputting in for X here, the value that we're told to input. And we get out negative four plus one is three. And I should say that's negative three. Negative two times two is negative four plus one is negative three. So our input was two and our output is negative three. Last but definitely not least, in fact, it's the most here, is three. So we input three in for our input variable x plus one. Our output is, well, let's see, negative two times three is negative six, plus one is negative five. So we input three, output is negative five. Notice a couple of things here. First, notice that for every input value we have, there was only one y value that went with it. For instance, when we plugged in one, we only got out negative one. No other number was a result of plugging in one, and no other number will be a result of plugging in one, except for this exactly one value. That makes this a function. Second thing to notice is, for every one value we go up in the x direction, we went down two values in the y direction. Hmm, I bet that had something to do with this negative two 
times each x. Oh yeah, more on that in a later video. That's all I've got for you, peeps. If you need a little bit more practice with this, I've got two or three problems on the flip side of this video as bonus coverage. Otherwise, we've covered what we needed to cover. But if you need that extra practice, stay tuned. And here we are on the flip side of the video. As promised, a little bit of bonus coverage. We are going to continue to evaluate functions for values that are given to us. So we're given that we are going to evaluate each function for 0, 1, 2, and 3. As I showed to you earlier in the video, I'm going to first do the work and then put everything nice and organized into a table. So we're going to start out with x equals 0, and we're going to input that in for x. So that would be 0 gets input for x minus 2 is negative 2. And so as the table goes, I've got my x values again are my inputs. Remember that this is input. And this, let me make that look more like a u, is output. y is our output, our result. So I've got an input of 0 and an output of negative 2. Then I'm going to input 1 because that's what we're told to input. So 1 minus 2 is equal to negative 1. So I input 1 and I got out negative 1. We'll keep going. I'm going to input in 2. y equals 2 minus 2, which is equal to 0. Again, replacing x for our inputs. Input is 2. Output is 0. Last but certainly not least, y is equal to our input is 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, so our input 3 output one. And there you have it folks. Again, note that for every input, there's only one output value that these numbers go to. So the number three goes only to one. That's it. There's no other number that when I plug three into this function rule that I would expect to get out aside from one, making it a function. Good stuff. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. y equals x over 3, this time involving a little division. And I'm going to evaluate these numbers into here. So y is my output. My input is 0. 0 over 3, that's the same as doing 0 divided by 3. That is equal to 0. So again, let's have our table going down here. So I'm just going to write input. That's my x value. My y value is output. So my input was 0. My output was 0. So wait. All right, now my input's going to be a 1. So y equals 1 divided by 3, which I, I don't really have any math to do. It's just 1 third. So I input 1. I got out 1 third. Now we're going to input 2. I have a feeling these division problems are not going to be so bad. 2 thirds is our output. So I input 2. 2 thirds is our output. Your teacher might want you to use a calculator, in which case you could divide 2 divided by 3 and round to whatever decimal they want you to round to. Last, and actually most, is the input of 3, which we put over 3. We're evaluating it into that function rule, which is 1. So my input is 3, output is 1. And there you have it, again noting that for every single input value, pick 2 for instance, there's only one output value that it gets paired with, making it a function. At this point, you should be like, I got it, Mr. G. But if you're not, watch some of this again. I promise you, it will help.